Hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm the Witch of Wonderlust here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today I've got a book review for you. As many of you know, I still work with the Witch's Box, currently doing their book subscription instead of their full box subscription, because I am really enjoying all of the books that I've gotten. And so far, all of them have been very informative, I've learned a lot, they've been a lot of fun to read, and this one was... This one was a challenge. We'll get into that in a second. Grab yourself a drink today. I'm drinking a butterfly pea flower jasmine infused tea. So it's blue and it starts it starts out blue and then it turns purple. Everybody's super enchanted by it. It's amazing. It's it basically just tastes like jasmine tea, but I really like jasmine tea. So link in the description if you want to check that out. It's by Teamy. Teamy. I think. <laughs> I don't know. It's down in the description below. I also have a 10% discount on this tea if that is something that you're interested in. So yeah, check that out. So April's box was on planetary magic. And if you know anything about me or my practice, you'll know that I pretty much use little to nothing when it comes to planetary magic. I don't use the zodiacs. I don't really use any kind of astrology in my own personal practice just because I don't really connect with it all that much. Um, it was kind of like picking up a book on a topic that I had never really understood anything about and so it was a rough read and I didn't even get through the whole book yet. I took so long to read this book and I didn't even finish it yet. I'm not even halfway through. Um, so basically the Witch's Box sends a box for the book subscription. They send a box every single month that dives a little deeper and past the Witchcraft 101 type of stuff. So they give you more intermediate and advanced type of books. So I've been really grateful to get all of these wonderful books and get more information that's more in depth rather than just the baseline surface level type of stuff that you would usually get. The first book that I read was The Planetary Spells and Rituals by Raven Digitalis. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically just a big book of planetary spells. So Raven starts out giving you kind of the basics, which I really appreciated. And then they also give you an example of how you would use planetary magic in a ritual or in a spell. I personally really like that style of teaching just because it's kind of like, okay, hypothetically, this is your situation. If you wanted this manifestation, we're going to use these different planetary correspondences, energies, whatever, and apply it this way. This is how we would use those. Or if you only have to work with these few days, then using those planetary energies of those specific days, this is how we would apply it. And I really, I connect with that type of teaching of just kind of applying it practically how you would do that rather than just here's the information apply it good luck an example of application is a really helpful thing for me another thing i really liked about this book it breaks it down into all of the planets all the way down so this first one is the sun and then it goes into the moon and it just goes all the way down with a bunch of spells for each planet so I thought that, that was really cool that it was like divided up, you know, it, I, I like organization, what can I say? So, you know, if I end up wanting to use one of these spells, I'm just going to flip to, oh, I want to work with Jupiter. So I'm just going to like flip to the little tab of Jupiter. Boom, there we go. And work with that energy. What I do like is that there's kind of a mix between folk magic and ceremonial magic in this, which I find... I'm, I'm definitely a folk practitioner. I'm not very well versed in ceremonial magic yet. Folk magic is definitely my comfort zone. That is where I know the most. Ceremonial magic, I know a little bit. And from what I do know, I'll apply it a little bit to my craft. I do work with the days. So, you know, Monday is Moon's Day. Tuesday is Mars. Wednesday is... What is Wednesday? Wednesday is Mercury, Thursday, Jupiter. So I will usually plan my spell work on the specific days. And this inspired me to work a little more with whatever phase the moon and the sun is in. And I kind of do want to dive a little deeper. So excited to apply that a little more into my craft rather than just working with the days. The spells in here are, they're actually practical. It's not, I feel like there's so many spells that are too specific that it's just hard to really apply it to anything unless that really specific situation arises or they're too general that you don't feel like it's it's really applying to anything for example there's one that is to mend quarrels with another so you know you can do a calming spell but 
who is that calming down? Is that calming down me? Is that calming down them? Is it calming down the situation? Is it all three? Is it, you know, I, I, too much. It's too general. It's too open. This one talks about what the specific manifestation is instead of just mending it and being like, yeah, everything's good. It's not making the other person agree with you. It's just to allow both parties to come to an agree to disagree arrangement where they're just like, you know what? We don't agree. That's fine. I, I don't really like spell books, to be completely honest. I like them as reference, but I've never really taken a spell straight out of a book, applied it, and felt like it worked super well. It, they do tell you, write in this book, make the spells your own, cross out or add things. One thing that Raven touches on that I really enjoy is the energies are versatile. So you can't just rely on Venus for just love, right? Venus has more correspondences than just love. Even if you are using Venus, love can be applied to so many different things. So even if you're trying to do a career spell and right now the most accessible energy is Venus, then you can work with Venus and you may have to change the spell a little bit, but the manifestation, the overall objective stays the same. You just have to understand how to mold and create those energies to be versatile for you. And that's a really cool idea because I don't see that in a lot of beginner books because I get that that's confusing, but I just think that that's really limiting. Create this thing in your mind of Venus is only for love, Jupiter is only for money and abundance. Looking at things like that is so limiting, and the fact that Raven brings that up in this book is refreshing. One of the examples they give is Mercury is good for communication, but it's also good for safe travels, and you can use it to stop gossip. So for example, in this book, for Mars, Mars is the god of war, right? So of course we're gonna think a lot of baneful magic. One of the first spells for Mars is cursing a violator, but they go on to have another spell of releasing anger. I did like this book a lot. Um, there are so many different ways. They even give you a bunch of symbols and sigils that you can work with and add to your rituals and spells. One thing that I adore about this book is the way they break down the spells is so good. I really, I like the way they break it down because if you look at a lot of spell books, especially beginner books, it's saying this is a spell for finding a new job and then it just gives you a list of ingredients and tells you what to do with them. It doesn't tell you what the energy of the spell is supposed to feel like, what kind of aesthetic, I guess, it's supposed to invoke in you or around you. It's not giving you anything deeper than that. And spells are so much more than just throwing together a bunch of random items that you don't even really know why you're using and just being like, yeah, I hope that works. The way they break it down, for example, for Venus, of course, the first one is summoning a lover. And they talk about how you should apply this, when you should apply this, what it should be feeling like, the, what the overall manifestation really should be geared towards. In every single spell, every single ritual, there is a section of stepping back and further application. And this whole piece, this whole section of every spell is explaining are you really needing to do this spell? And I think that is such a good thing to explain, especially to beginners. I wish this was in more beginner spell books. So for example, this one, summoning a lover using Venus, the stepping back and further application section, the first thing it says is if you're single and unhappy with being single, which is unfortunately common, consider the reasons. And I'm not talking about reasons why nobody likes you and victim-based mentality, they're highly unrealistic. Instead, analyze the spiritual reason as to why the universe would put you in this lonely situation. Perhaps there's an abundance of self-work that you need to accomplish now, and doing this spell would only be ignoring its necessity. So that is basically saying you need to do some shadow work before you do any of these spells. This is why I tell you to do readings before every spell. Because even if you're like, you know what? I'm single and like ready to mingle. Or, you know, maybe you're you and your partners are ready to mingle. Step back and evaluate. Is this something that needs to be in my life? Is this, is this new job actually good for me? Is this new lover actually going to be good for me? I may want it now and I may feel like it's going to be really good for me, but is that in the long run actually going to be good or is that just going to be another obstacle? Is that job going to be another obstacle of getting you where you need to go? Is that actually gonna be an obstacle of moving to the place that you wanna to move to and being with the people that you wanna be with? You know, there's situations in the world gets crazy. So the step back and further application is a wonderful, wonderful thing in this book. So once you do the step back and further application, 
then it goes into the supplies you'll need any little notes which is another thing that i love this is a different spell but this is the step back in application these are the supplies and then there's notes so the notes are usually kind of little things of why you might need x y and z it'll give you some different substitutes for difficult herbs to find um, it'll give you things like, oh, maybe you could wear all black to represent X, Y, and Z, or um, do it at this time of day, you know, little things like that. And after it gives you the little notes, it goes into the procedure and gives you a very detailed way of going about this. So, pretty good book overall. I think this is a really good spell book to have on hand, especially if you're thinking about or you're wanting to use planetary magic in your craft, in your practice. The only thing is quite a big printing mishap with this book, which was really unfortunate. Um, let me see if I can find it. Beginning of Saturn, they're missing the first, it just goes straight into like a, into like the first paragraph there and it's missing a full page. So if I flip back, it's just missing the full page. Uranus, there it, it's accidentally flipped at the very end of Saturn. It's a little bit of a mishap. I do wish that the Saturn one wasn't missing because I was really interested in kind of seeing the first part of that. But, you know, it's not... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I've got a whole book, I'm missing a whole page, whatever. I emailed Llewellyn and was just let him know nicely. I was like, hey, I really liked this book, but, you know, there was a thing that happened. God, it's so hot. Nobody's in my house right now. Y'all gotta keep it down, I'm filming. Okay, the only downsides of this particular book that I could find as, you know, a very beginner person in planetary magic, so if you were well-versed and you read this and you're like, what is this? Then, you know, let me know. But <laughs> I thought it was nice. I liked it. I liked the way the, the spells were set up, the rituals were set up. The only thing was other than the, the misprints, which obviously wasn't due to the author, was that I do wish that it went more in depth on just the energies themselves of each planet. The beginning kind of makes me think that it is geared towards people who have never really worked with planetary magic, so it was kind of a deep dive just like throwing you to the sharks and being like, this is kind of how you apply it, good luck. And Which I don't mind, um, but I do think in that you do have to remember that you have to teach each energy. And because they talk about how versatile each energy is, I do kind of wish that they went in more of that, of like, oh, Venus is for love, but also for this, this, and this, and here is how you would apply it. Because they only did that once in the very beginning, but that's not really like a heavy note that I feel like I would subtract stars from on like the Amazon review or anything like that. It was just a personal opinion. But yeah, I thought that it was a it was a good read. I got through it relatively quick. I thought that a lot of the spells were actually practical and could be used, especially in a modern day situation. The practical application, I liked the stepping back and evaluating why you would be doing this spell, X, Y, and Z. There were just a lot of good things about it. So just that one little detail. Granted, I could go look up myself, but it is a book on planetary magic, so like, should have the information. Going on to the second book, which is way fatter than the first book, and I, like I said, I, I had to read this so slow. I can usually get through a book like this in about a week and a half to two weeks. This is like if you put a fifth grader into a college class. That's how I felt. Like if they were just like, okay, hey, good luck in your college classes, and he's like 12. This was overwhelming for me. Now, the foreword, for some reason, I'm told that a lot of people don't read the four words. I don't know why. It gets you kind of excited. I'm reading this and it kind of gets you excited. They really talk up the authors. They really give you good information on where the authors come from and how much experience and where they learned all this stuff from. There were a lot of words that I didn't understand in this book. So I did a lot of definition searching and definition writing. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with that because there's I can't really pronounce a lot of them yet. So, always the student. <laughs> this is just an overwhelming amount of knowledge for somebody who knows so little about planetary magic. And within the th first 30 pages, I was, I felt lost. So yeah, this is definitely not a beginner's book, which is probably a good thing for a lot of you planetary magic people or ceremonial magic people. I'm also using the planetary hours and trying to apply that as well to my spell work and my rituals. 
the thing that I was kind of complaining about in the last book was that they didn't go into the energies specifically of each planet. This much of the book is just talking about each planet in depth, like in serious depth. Correspondence of Luna, the moon, right? Gives you the planetary sign, the planetary name in English, Greek, and Hebrew, and then a planetary profile. Intense, passionate, yet cold and changeful. Glamour and dreaming, sudden adventure, childlike wonder and delight. This sphere has an infinity with the fluctuating tides of the ocean, which the moon governs. So it does give you a little more of the the feel, the energy, if that, you know what I'm saying, like that aesthetic, that, that, I don't like using the word aesthetic for it, but you know what I'm saying, like it just invokes that energy in you and that gives me so much more of an idea of what kind of energy I'm working with and how I would want to apply it. Then it gives you text from the 32 paths of wisdom, elemental affinity of the planet, which is air for the moon, symbols, magical implements, it goes into numerology, quality of design, different colors, music for the planetary moods, suitable instruments and sound effects, animals, mythological beings, trees, vegetation, gemstones, minerals, planets, and health for the physical, spiritual, and psychic effects, planetary gestures. So description on, on how to use your whole body and gesture the planetary gesture, which I had never heard of before. So that was very interesting and I looked like an idiot trying it out. Let's not talk about that. It gives you a song. Each one has a good, I want to say a good like 10 pages on each one. So I complained about it in the last one. My prayers were answered. <laughs> At least I could give you that much of the, the small amount that I even got through this book. So I apologize for not being able to do a more in-depth review, but at the end of the month, every time they send out these books, you are invited to a Zoom meeting with everybody else who read the books. And if you're able to make the Zoom meeting, that's cool. If you're not, they give you a little link and you can replay it. Sometimes the authors show up and you can ask them questions, but most of the time it's kind of like a witchy book club. And you sit down and you talk about any questions you might have, any comments, any other resources, or maybe something that you experienced or tried or anything like that. And I've always loved these Zoom meetings. Something that I shared with that Zoom meeting group was using the magic of iJournal. And if you've been on my channel, you've been on my Instagram, you know that I love, love these journals and I'm affiliated with them now, so they're pretty great. This is all planetary stuff. There's a little bit of a guide. I would suggest this to both people who are beginners and intermediate and advanced. It goes into some depth. And for example, it tells you all of the different planetary things going on that day. Please focus. I'll leave a link to my favorite things. I talk about it more there, but I also will leave a link here and they also have a discount code storewide for you. So I will leave a link down in the description as always, of course. I really liked this as a resource because I started to keep track of the new moon signs, the full moon signs, what day was being ruled by what sign and planetary energies. And I started planning my spells and rituals around those things. And I started to see a little bit more of a boost in my manifestations. And I don't think that I've gotten the hang of it totally. I don't feel like I'm even close to that, but it has helped a lot with, I literally only use this journal for my, my witchiness. Um, so even if I'm doing like sun tea or if you're doing moon water, you can check the days of what sign the moon is in when you're planning on doing that, what sign the sun is in, all of that jazz. And I've been using that a lot more often. That is my book review. Yeah, um, I did get some comments of asking if I could do more in-depth book reviews. And so I hope that that kind of was a little more in depth, at least on the first book that I gave a review on. I know that the second book was definitely not in depth because I couldn't even get through it quite yet, but I'm gonna try to be a little more specific when I do my book reviews. I hope that this first book at least was a little more specific than my usual. Now, that is all for this video. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It does help me and all of your other favorite YouTubers. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.